most amazing artists and welcome back to week two of our Pointillism Balloons project. Last week we learned all about the artist Soro. If you missed our presentation last week then make sure you go watch it so you can learn all about this artist, all about his life growing up, and the technique that he sort of kind of invented pointillism, which is the main point of this project. Also last week, we drew the picture for our pointillism project, and it is a picture of hot air balloons in the sky with some land down here. And I just wanted to say before we get started today that you guys have done an amazing job so far. I am so happy with all of your drawings that you've been sending me. Um, you guys did an amazing job following the directions of the video and being super creative and adding your own little details. So you can give yourself a pat on the back. You guys deserve it. Good job on your drawing last week. Now this week, we are going to fill in the background with some color. And as you can see, I did not paint the insides of my hot air balloons because that is where we're going to do that cool pointillism technique next time. So to fill in our background, I decided to use a watercolor paint. So if you would like to follow along with the same materials that I use, then you will need some watercolor paint, a water cup, and a paintbrush. It can also get a little bit messy, so I definitely recommend putting a messy mat down under your work or some newspaper or something just to cover your work surface. So we don't get paint all over it. I also decided to use some crayons to just outline my smaller details a little bit more because I was scared that it would be a little bit tricky to paint them and I go over that a little bit later in this video. So you'll also need some crayons. If you don't have any paint, then you guys can use whatever coloring materials you have, crayons, markers, colored pencils. Just look around your house and see what you can find. I am super excited to continue this project with you guys, but before we get started, let's go ahead and say our class mantra all together on the count of three. One, two, three. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. Before we start painting with our watercolor, I am just gonna take some crayons and I wanna go in and just color in any of those smaller details that I have because with watercolor, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to paint those. So I just wanna color them first with my crayons. So I'm just coloring my flowers down here because they're pretty small details and they'd be a little bit tricky to paint over with watercolor, but they are a lot easier to color and you can color your details whatever you want to. All right, so there are my flowers colored. You can even take a green crayon and add some like grassy texture if you want to. Just to add a little bit more interest into our hills here. And I think I'm gonna take my crayon and I'm just gonna outline that hill. So then I can't see any more pencil lines. What's cool about this is whenever we use a crayon, this is made out of wax. Wax and water do not mix, so whenever we paint on top of it, it won't move around. The wax will kind of resist the paint and you'll still be able to see those beautiful colors that we just used. I also wanna go over any of my pencil lines like my sun, I'll just go over that with orange. And I think that's all I need to do with my crayons for now, at least down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my watercolors. And you know, these are watercolors because we have to add water to them. Right now they're really dry, so I can't really paint with them. So I'm just gonna carefully open up my water cup. And uh, I'm going to take my watercolor brush. A watercolor brush has really soft bristles like this one, so it can hold a lot of water. So I'm just going to first take my paintbrush in the water, and I wanna paint my hills first, so I think I'm just gonna use green for that. So I'm just dipping my paintbrush in the water. And I'm gonna put it on my green. We gotta wake this paint up, so I'm just gonna keep adding water to it until it is fully awake and ready for me to use. I can tell that it's ready because I can see some green on my paintbrush and there's also a little puddle of water in that watercolor so I know it is ready to be painted with. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint right over top of my flowers. And as you can see, the crayon is resisting the paint because crayons are made out of wax and water and wax do not mix, my friends. So remember with watercolor, we just wanna put it on our paper and let it do whatever it wants to do. You can keep adding water. And since we outlined the hill with our crayon, it is acting as kind of like a barrier so we don't get any of this green into our sky. All right, making sure I fill in every single white space. Then I'm gonna get some more water, some more green paint, because I still have another hill over here that I have to do. And I'm gonna paint that hill. So those are my hills done. I'm just gonna clean my paintbrush and I'm gonna wake up some warmer colors for my sun. So I am going to wake up my orange. Just add some water to it. Wake it up. We know our paint is awake when we can see it on our paintbrush. There's a little orange in there and there's a little puddle of water inside of that oval. So now I'm just gonna paint my sun and I think I wanna do a mixture. Uh-oh, just got a little orange. Can you see that? I just got a little orange in my hill here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my paintbrush. I'm gonna dry it off a little bit on my messy mat. Dry it off just a little bit on my messy mat. And I can actually use my brush and just kind of move that orange paint away. Dry it off again, move that orange paint away. Now you can't even really see it. So if you make a mistake with your watercolor, what you do is you just take your paintbrush, clean it off, dry it off a little bit, and carefully pick up that color with the paintbrush until it is gone. So what I was saying before I had that little accident is I want to mix my colors. So I'm just gonna take some yellow too. I'm just gonna add some water to my yellow. And I wanna paint that in my sun as well. So you can mix your colors as well if you'd like to. I would just stick with warm colors, stay with the warm colors, and cool colors, stay with the cool colors. Because sometimes if you mix warm and cool colors, they can just turn into a brown color. And I don't know if that is exactly what you're going for. All right, so there's my sun. Now we get to paint our sky and we need to be really careful at this point because this watercolor is still very wet and if we pick up our paper then this orange is going to start dripping all into our hills. So we want to leave it flat like this and I'm just going to move it down a little bit so I can easily get to my sky. And I think what I want to do is I think I'm going to outline my clouds with a blue. So carefully trying not to get paint on my sweater here. I am just going to outline my clouds with a blue. You can outline them with any color that you want to. And I'm outlining my clouds because I want this crayon to act as a barrier for whenever I paint my sky. I don't want to get any of this watercolor into my clouds because I want them to stay white. So that's why I'm outlining them. That crayon is going to help me keep these clean and stay white like actual clouds. I'm also going to be painting my baskets for my hot air balloons. So I'm just gonna outline those in brown and I'm gonna go over those texture lines that we made last time, those vertical and horizontal lines to make sure I can still see them when I paint on top of them. The only thing we're not gonna paint in watercolor is our hot air balloons. And of course, if you wanna leave your clouds white, we're not gonna paint those either we are going to paint the baskets. So just use a crayon to go over those lines so that when we paint on top we can see them really well. And for the little strings that come down I think I'm just going to go over those with some black crayons. Just go over those lines with a black crayon. Not too worried about those but I want to be able to make sure that we can see them whenever we paint on top of this and they don't just blend in with our sky, then we would just have a floating balloon and a floating basket and nothing to connect the two. 
All right, I'm not even gonna outline my hot air balloons because that is where our pointillism technique is gonna go next time. So just outline any of those other details like the baskets, any clouds, maybe you have an airplane flying by, you'll wanna outline that with a crayon. Um, but just leave your hot air balloons in pencil because we're gonna worry about those next time. Once you've outlined any important details with your crayon, we're gonna go back into our watercolor. I think for my sky, I wanna do a mixture of blue and violet. And whenever I mix those two, remember, blue is a primary color, violet is a secondary color. And when we mix them, we get a tertiary color, and that is blue-violet. The sky might take you a little bit longer to do because we have to go around all of these details and we need to be super careful when we do that. We need to be careful because we're trying not to get those colors to mix together. Like I don't want this purple to mix into my sun. And I also am trying to go around my clouds very carefully so that I don't get any paint inside of them. We need to be super careful when we're going around our hot air balloons as well, because remember, that is going to be the star of our show next week when we add the pointillism to it. So I'm just going back and forth with my blue and my purple to cover my sky, being super careful around any important details. I'm going very slowly and carefully just to make sure that my paint is going where I want it to go. In these bigger areas, I don't have to be as careful, but especially around these little baby clouds, I need to be super careful. We also wanna go behind our hot air balloon, so right in this little space between our basket and our balloon, we're gonna just add a little bit of watercolor to fill that space in. If you want your colors to blend a little bit better, then you just need to add some water. Water is the key to painting with watercolors. And as you can see, my watercolor is doing whatever it wants to do. It has a mind of its own, and I'm just gonna let it do what it wants to do. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. What I need to worry about the most is just making sure I'm taking my time and going around any important details. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my sky and I'll come back to show you what mine looks like. My sky looks done and I thought of something while I was painting and that is that my sky looks kind of dark. So it looks like it's getting closer to nighttime. If you want it to look more like daytime, then whenever you're painting your watercolors, you're just gonna wanna add more water. That'll lighten up any colors that you put onto your paper. So for example, if I put down some blue, the more water that I add on top of it, the lighter my blue will be. But I kind of actually like how dark my sky is. It looks very interesting. So I'm just gonna roll with it and keep on going. And the last step that we have to do is we need to paint the baskets and carefully a little bit inside of those strings that are holding our basket to our balloon. So I'm just gonna wash my paintbrush and I'm gonna pick up a brown color because that's the color of my baskets. Maybe your basket is a different color. I'm just gonna take some brown, carefully paint it onto my baskets. finish going over all of your little details in crayon and painting your sky and your hills and your sun if you have that 
the little baskets on your hot air balloons, then you are done. Next week, we are gonna learn more about pointillism and how exactly to create pointillism. We're gonna practice it a little bit first and then we are going to add it to our hot air balloons to finish off this artwork. I hope you guys had a lot of fun painting your sky and your land today. I can't wait to see them. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.